course we're hitting the beach at high tide, it's always safest to make sure that the, the tyre pressure is let out of the tyres. What it does is it gives the tyre a bigger footprint in the sand. So we've got these little uh, tyre deflators we call them and we just screw them onto the tyre like so. And that'll gradually let the air out and it'll actually stop the tyre at a preset setting, which I've set to 23 psi. A lot of people go lower, but I like 23 psi because it gives you a little bit of room to move if you do get bogged. But I've never had a problem with that and it's, um, yeah, it's going to make sure that the car has a, a more uh, firmer feel when you're driving through the sand, doesn't tend to stray. And uh, yeah, the other thing is it is a lot more capable when it's in four wheel drive with the tyres uh, having a bigger footprint as well. I think what we're looking for predominantly this time of day, we've, we've got a run out tide, we're probably about an hour or so off the low tide, so at the moment we'd be looking for nice shallow drains for the, uh, the whiting, the brim, those sort of fish, and um, ideally if we found a, a section of beach which was nice and steep, what we would do is probably mark it off from the GPS, because it's a nice area to come back to later on when the, uh, when the tide pushes back in. While Rob's down chasing the fish in the gutter in the background there, I'll take you through one of his tools of the trade, it's a piece of work, come with me. Organised anglers typically catch fish and Rob has worked on the back of his car to set it up to be a picture of efficiency and organisation. What he's got here is built in a, basically a whole storage system of a, of a drawer for putting all these knives, extra boxes for slugs, got our nighttime vision stuff, he's got his torches in there, set of pliers, got our warm weather gear and we've also got some additional tackle requirements. Come up to the, the top here we've got some drawers with a lot of our portable style tackle few spares by the look of it. Got all our drinking water, buckets, ice, eskies. What a wonderful way to set up the rear of a beach fishing car. We're obviously in a Toyota, which is a very reliable Australian outdoor vehicle. Perfect for the beach. Cabin's well set up. Got nice mats for keeping our sand contained, which is always going to keep the missus happy, and that's got to be a good thing. Also got a GPS setup, which is talking to Rob very good at when he likes driving the beach at those low tide points to start spotting likely looking places to fish when the tide comes back in. He very quickly locates them with a GPS. Easy to come back if beaches do start looking differently on different points of the tide. If you've got a GPS locked, away we go. A very efficient cabin beach fishing setup. When it comes to beach fishing in Queensland, you can see what a popular pastime it is because so many four-wheel drives run around our roads with setups like this on the front. And if you're not familiar with them, this is an arrangement for carrying your rods at the transport stage. So we've got a a set of racks popped on top of our bull bar, which make a nice mount for stowing rods over the top of your vehicle when you're traveling. That's one way of doing it. The other way, if you follow me around here, we've got a pair of the rod lock lockers doing the same sort of thing, but nice and easily st stuck on there. Take them on and off, a nice portable arrangement, which means might not be as permanent as this other way of doing it. A lot of our beach anglers like to spend a weekend on the beach, which means they come to a place like this and they stay the night. To do that, you sometimes want a little bit more storage room in your vehicle. We've obviously filled the back with all our fishing gear. We've got a crate on top of the car to put our camping stuff, stuff for keeping us comfortable through a night fishing on the beach. All in all, we've got a wonderful vehicle set up for all the wants and needs of a good beach fishing angler. Preparing for a beach fishing is like any sport. One of those things, it, it, it always pays to take a bit of time out, think about what you're going to do. What I like to do is look at the tides, most importantly, when, when's high tide, when's the low tide. And then look at the time of year as well, what species may be around that particular time of year, because I always like to target a particular species at certain times of year. And uh, make sure I've got fresh baits, uh, um, prepare the car as well, make sure the foil drives up to scratch, because beach fishing can be one of those things that is fairly remote. So you want to be sure that both yourself, your tackle and your vehicle is up to speed. Uh, look, aside from that, it's just uh, getting up there and having an absolute ball.